Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Snow Owl and I'm going to be sipping on some cinnamon spice tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Okay, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, purple violet, deep yellow, Mars black, and burnt umber, which I will call brown. And of course, you can switch up those colors as well, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using a white piece of chalk for some drawing later. And then I have three brushes that I'll be using for my tools. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using, from the large canvas to the same kind of paints, and I'll even throw in the chalk and the paper towel and all the other good stuff in between, so that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting the background, which in essence is the ground to our landscape. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are blue, purple, brown, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself two soft shades of like a light bluey purple kind of color. I'm going to use those two colors as the dominant force in my ground because I really just want it to look like a sunshiny, um, snow covered ground, which typically will have a lot of like blues and purples in it. And then we'll use some additional brown and white to get some um, little bit of texture going on in the in the ground. So what I'm going to first do is mix myself two shades of a light purpley blue kind of color. So I've already pre-mixed two different colors so you can see them. This one is a little bit more blue, that's a little bit more purple. They're both created with blue, purple, white, and brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blue, I'm going to save some of this for later, so I'm going to just put a little bit of my blue down in through here to save for later. I'm going to save a little bit of purple too, just in case I need it for something else. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of blue or purple to my blue, and then I'm going to add a little bit of white and a little bit of brown, and I'm also going to add some blue to my purple. So I added a little bit of purple to the blue and a little bit of blue to the purple, and now I'm adding brown and white to both of them. So white goes in here and brown goes in here as well. And then I just start spinning them around. It's okay if yours doesn't come out exactly the same color as mine. I'm gonna just do this so it doesn't fall out of this little compartment. Um, it can be lighter or darker than mine. It can be more muted than mine. It can be more vibrant than mine. I am definitely just going for a soft, neutral type of tone that has purple hues in it and blue hues in it. So that way, I think I want it a little bit lighter than that. And I will be able to kind of tweak this as I go, uh, as I'm applying it to the ground. So that way, if I want 
a little bit more brown in it, I can do that, or a little bit more blue, I can do that. So I can certainly kind of bend it, twist it, and shape it as I go through the process. But this is about where I'm headed with this. And you don't even need to blend it all the way because we're going to be doing a really out of focus type of background. So now that I've got my purple, brown, and white, I'm going to mix them in with my bit of blue in through here. And it's a kind of a, tr I don't want to say a trial and error, but you can see my blue is a lot brighter than this color in through here. So I'm going to add more white to it and maybe a bit more brown to it. And then I'm just going to kind of spin it around until I get it into a color that I like. And then once I've got that color that I like, there we go, we're getting, we're getting it into the right vicinity now. Once I've got my two shades that I want, again, one is a little bit more blue and one is a little bit more purple than the other one. So what I'm gonna do now, though, that's looking pretty good to me. I'm not gonna wash my brush. I, as you saw, I didn't wash it through my mixing process either. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to start applying it to the, the canvas. So I'm gonna be typically using a left to right, almost crisscross type of brush stroke to get the paint on here. I do want there to be varying colors, which is why I did both the light purple and the light blue. So now without washing my brush, I just picked up some of that light purple color and I'm gonna do that in various areas along the, um, along the canvas as well. I'm gonna get these to really kind of blend in well together and I'm gonna do the entire canvas with both of these colors and then I will introduce some areas of brown to make some darker areas and areas of white to make some lighter areas. So don't feel the need to get this into one solid color or even to use the same exact color pattern that I'm using. We're gonna have ample opportunity to make little adjustments. I will most likely do two layers on this background simply because I love to layer and I love the different textures and um, the nuances that come with putting multiple layers on the canvas. So that to me will make this look even more realistic. But right now I'm just still using the blue and the, the light blue and the light purple to get the, the full background on here. And now that I've got it on here, now I'm just gonna start introducing little bits of brown and white. My, my, my paint is still pretty wet, so because it's still pretty wet and I used a good amount for this process, I can take, without washing my brush, just pick up a little bit of white, start introducing some lighter areas to the entire scope of the of the background and I just kind of lightly blend it in you can have darker areas I'm going to add a bit of brown in a minute the top area of the canvas I do want to have for me visually a little bit more out of focus than the bottom area so the bottom area maybe instead of doing these big soft areas maybe I put in a little more streaky type of appearance for some of the for some of the little snow drifts that might be happening because this part will be the part that's going to be closer to the viewer. This is where the bird will be taking off. Um, I'm gonna pick up some brown now to introduce a little bit of brown into this background. And I'm gonna wor work the paint as it's drying. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I felt like it was a little bit overloaded. And I'm just gonna kind of keep doing these left to right, almost like little crisscross type of um, brush strokes. You can certainly, if you're finding your paint is too wet or you're not getting the look that you want, you can certainly just kind of back off for a minute, let it dry, do another coat. I know for me, like I said, I will most likely do another coat for this as it dries if there's any areas that I want to add to it or subtract from it or add more brown or add more white or add more purple, I will do that. So I'm going to um, let my canvas dry, see if I want to do a second layer, which you can certainly do the same on your part. And then we are going to be utilizing our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got your background done, you can put your um, large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our bird. I'm gonna be using my white piece of chalk. You can certainly use any writing utensil that you'd like to. I'm using the chalk because it's nice and easy to erase if I need to make a, make a correction along the way. Um, this step will be much easier if your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take the extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it drier. You can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide you through a series of markers. We'll connect the markers. We'll have some basic shapes and hopefully by the time we're done we'll have a nice outline that we'll be able to paint in with this beautiful winter owl. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to be, my first shape that I'm going to make is a kind of a diagonal oval type of shape. This is going to be for the main part of the body. So you're going to want to find the center of your canvas. So the center of my canvas is right about here. So up and down, I'm about here. Left to right, I'm about here. Give or take a little bit. And then I'm going to go to the right of that, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch, make myself a little bit of a marker. I'm going to come down from that about three inches. So this is a little bit less than half the way. If you were to cut from here to the bottom of your canvas, that'd be about halfway. I'm a little above that. So that's gonna be the bottom. I'm gonna then give myself a couple of markers on the left to the right. So to the right, I'm gonna go about two to two and a half inches from here and then down about an inch. These are gonna be kind of sideways, so that way that'll give us a sideways oval. And then from here, I'm gonna to go to the left of this one, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, and then up about an inch, inch and a half, something like that. So I've got four markers. I'm gonna connect these with an oval type of a shape. The only um, thing that I want to forewarn you about is when you make dots like that, the tendency is to connect those dots with a straight line. So just make sure that you have these edges curved so it looks like an oval and not like a rectangle type of shape. So that's going to be the main section of the body. Next what we're going to do is we're going to draw some wings. So I'm going to draw this top wing or this wing, the right, the top right wing. It's, it's left wing, but it's right to us. So this one first. I'm going to go right kind of in the where we made that first marker somewhere in here, a little bit to the right, make myself a mark right in through there. Then I'm going to travel down this oval about an inch, inch and a half to right about here, make another marker. I'm going to go all the way up to the right hand corner of my canvas. I'm going to come in from there, maybe about two, two and a half inches, and then down about an inch. I'm going to connect this dot to here but I'm gonna have what I'm gonna to refer to as the bend in the wing, because these wings are gonna be, they kind of come splay out and then they bend a little bit. So I'm gonna make um, this not just a continual arcing line, it's gonna kind of have a joint or a bend in it right about here. So this is almost halfway between here and here and a little bit to in to the right of here. So something like that. That's going to give you a marker where you can give it kind of a natural bend in the shape or, or the angle of the wing. So right in through here, I'm going to start bending it in through here to get myself to that um, exterior kind of wing part. And then what I'm going to do is from here, uh, where this little bend part is, I'm going to go to the right of that and maybe down a little bit, about an inch, make myself another marker. I'm going to connect this to this with a little bit of a curved line, something like that. And then I'm going to connect here to here with a whole bunch of ends of feathers. So these don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have the same number as I do. But when I do it, the ones that are going to be in the upper region up and through here are going to be larger. And then the ones down here are going to be smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm from here, I'm going to just kind of bring this in. I'm going to bring this out and then I'm just going to kind of give myself a series of bumps leading me to this interior area in through here. And that's all I'm going to do for that wing. My next wing over here, I'm going to start it. This is going to be a kind of a continual arc in through here. So this is going to come out right in through there. The other um, the underside of this wing is going to come out right about in through here. So this should almost be similar to this. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but in a, in a similar kind of um, 
distance. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, kind of give myself a marker for that bend in the wing. So I'm going to have it right about here. So where that is, is about halfway up here. So about halfway up there, bring yourself to the left. And I would say you're maybe about two, three inches from the left of the oval. So somewhere in that vicinity. And then the the farthest out tip is going to be somewhere in through here. So this is almost parallel, maybe a little bit higher than the bottom of this oval, um, and maybe about an inch, inch and a half away from the edge of the canvas. So I'm going to connect here to here with a line, and again, it doesn't have to be super straight, and then I'll connect here to here with another long kind of arcing type of line. I'm going to give myself another marker in through here like I did here. So wherever this joint is, you can kind of come down maybe about two and a half inches. Again, I'm, oh, I'm a little bit higher than where we made that original marker here. So somewhere in this vicinity is where I'm putting that marker. And then what I'm going to do is I'll connect it similarly to how I did the other one. But this side, we're going to be seeing the edges of the wings on this bottom side, whereas this area we didn't. So from here to here, this is going to be a whole bunch of little bumps that I'm just going to connect in through there. And then I'm going to connect this one to here with my bigger wing or bigger feathers at the edge and then smaller little ones as they work their way towards there. So something like this, bring it down and out. And then I'm just going to kind of work my way up to here with these little bumps going like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself a tail feather on. So I'm going to have my tail feather coming out from where these two meet in through here. So little marker there. You're going to come down from here, maybe about an inch, inch and a half. You don't want to go all the way down to the bottom of the oval. A little bit up from that is where I'm going to have that. And then the tip of my tail feather is going to be a little bit below this and maybe over about two and a half to three inches, something like that. You can connect here to here with a pretty straight line. And then when you go to connect here to here, you're going to do those little bumps too. So something like this will give me those little bumps for there. Now we're going to put ourselves on a couple of really cute owl leg feet. <laughs> so when I was doing this, I'm like, oh my God, they look just like, like fluffy bunny feet. So I think that they're really cute. So I get excited on these legs. I'm not quite sure why, but I do. Um, so you're going to have two legs coming in through here. I'm going to give you the exterior and then the interior. So you're going to come right to the right of the tail feather a little bit, something like that. As you come over this right um, oval, just come down about a, an inch, something like that, and then give yourself a marker about halfway between those two. We're going to do the left leg first because this one's going to be kind of in front. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and bring it down a little bit in an arcing line like that. I'm going to bring this uh, kind of over here with a little bit of a curve. And then this is going to have like, a, uh, we'll call it like the elbow. I don't know if that's really what it's called, but it's going to give it a little bit of a, of a curved in through there. And then this is just kind of the little foot that comes down in through here. We'll give it much more detail when we um, paint it in, but that's the general gist of it. So when I do this one over on this side, I'm doing a pretty similar profile shape to what I just did here. So I'm going to come over here, give it a little bit of a curve like that a little bit of a downward curve like that, and then just kind of bring it up in through here with just a little bit of a curved type of line. And that is all I'm going to be doing for the outline of my owl. We're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat of the bird. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are brown and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a light tan color. I'm going to be using that as the base color for my bird. So that way when I go to add all of the highlights and shadows and stuff, I've got a great neutral base to work from. I don't want to go all the way white on this base coat because I want to be able to build to the lightness. So. I've magically pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed. So this is the color I'm headed to. So how I got to that is I really just used brown and white. So 
you can, I think I used about equal parts of both of these colors, and then I just mixed them together. I know that it will get a little bit darker as it dries, and it will have a little bit of a color shift because of the um, blue background that's underneath it. So I'm planning for that, but it doesn't have to be a perfect color because we're gonna be doing a lot of different details on top of it. We're just looking for a nice neutral base that's gonna help us build our feathers and all of our details easily. So once I've got the color that I want, I'm gonna be painted it in. Um, I will kind of, as I do my wings, I will use a little bit of a directional brush stroke, but when I do the center part of the owl, I'm not gonna be doing any fancy brush stroke. When I get to the wings and the tail feather, maybe I'll use, I'll put my brush in the direction of the, um, of the wings, but that's not necessary. When I go to the end of it, I'll just use my brush and kind of push the tip of my brush to get these little curved tips. When I go to do the um, legs of the of the bird, I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave a little bit of a separating point in between them, but I just feel felt I wanted to go on to this wing right now, I guess. <laughs> just kind of getting that on there. And again, just kind of bringing my brush stroke in the direction that I feel the, the feathers would be, um, would be falling. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these feet legs. So the only part I'm really concerned about is where they meet in through here. So I'm gonna bring my color all the way to the edge of this one. And then on the other one, I'll leave a little tiny space in between them. So that way I don't lose the identity of one from the other. And then when I get to the bottom of the little foot, I know how fluffy they are at the bottom of the foot. So I'm gonna just utilize my brush and give these um, uneven kind of edges to it, just where, I want to call it a paw, but it's not a paw. <laughs> it's definitely a, a, a foot, but it's got so much little fluff on it. I keep, you know, it resembles like a, a rabbit or a dog paw or something. They're just really cute. So as I go ahead and do this one, I can certainly bring my color right up to that separating point. And I'm just leaving myself a little tiny bit of a, um, of an area that I can personally see the difference of the two. We'll be um, separating them a little bit more with shadows and stuff like that, but um, as you're just getting this base coat on here, leaving that visual separation point will help you um, when you go to put the details on later. So just getting that done, I'm gonna finish up this wing over in through here. And again, just using this light tan color as a nice neutralizing base and bringing this color all the way to the end of my chalk mark. When I go to these edges, I push my brush in this direction so I can kind of push it into the tip of that feather and then just kind of pull it up. You might find a much better technique for, for your own personal brush or, the or your style of painting, but this is the way it just kind of gives me an easy application to, to hit these little tips and um, to get those feathers in the direction that I want. And then I just kind of finish it off with pulling the paint in that direction. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for this one over here. This one, this is, we're actually seeing the outside of the wing in this particular area. So we don't need any little fluffy edges to it. We're just gonna kind of paint it all in one solid color for now. When we go to do the details on it, we can, we'll have lots of other information that we'll be putting on them, but right now just doing a base coat. And then same thing with up here, this top side is gonna be pretty, um, a pretty clean edge to it up and through here. And then the part with the tips of the feathers, that's where I will utilize that um, it, uh, application where I just kind of push my brush to get the, the, the firmness on the tip of that feather and then just kind of pull it in so I can keep that little curved um, edge to the little scalloped edge to the, 
the feathers that look like that. And of course, you don't have to have the same number of feathers that I do. Yours will probably be a different number than mine. It all works out in the long run. We'll have a nice process to putting the color and the dimension in it. Um, so it'll be a fun process. And then we're gonna be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your base coat on your bird, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna be painting the shadow of the bird on the ground. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are blue, black, and if I need to, I'll go into some of my, any of my background color, the light purple or the light blue. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna first pre-mix myself what I'm gonna call a dark blue color. This will be the, sh the primary shadow color that I'm gonna be using. So again, I've just pre-mixed it so you can kind of see where I'm headed. What I did was I took some of my blue and I just added a teeny tiny dot of black paint into it. You really do not need much black in order to turn this into a nice dark blue. It will also get a little bit darker as it dries. So don't, um, you know, just be cautious when you're adding the black. You only need a really tiny, tiny bit. Once you've got what you, the color that you want, what I'm going to do, I don't need a lot of paint on my brush. I am going to just kind of wipe it off on my paper towel and I'm going to kind of plan out where I want this shadow to be. Shadows on the ground from a flying bird can really be skewed. So this can certainly be flatter and wider. It can be at a little bit different of an angle. So don't feel that it has to be a mirror image of the bird. The, the light source is going to be off in the distance at an angle. So the angle we're looking at the bird is gonna be different than the angle the shadow is at. So don't, again, feel the pressure of making it look like a mirror image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the shadow splaying out almost the entire length of my canvas at a, a pretty similar angle, but it's gonna be um, much more squashed than the bird is itself. So I'm gonna have my shadow kind of starting in through here. And to start, I'm gonna be using just a real light sketcherly kind of brush stroke, just so I can kind of plan it out. This is gonna be kind of the shadow of the body and I wanna plan out how far out I want my wing to go. So I'm gonna have my wing coming all the way out over in through here. When I do this shadow, I'm gonna be kind of watching the top edge of the bird for the top edge of my shadow and the bottom edge of my bird for the bottom edge of my shadow. When I'm doing my shadow, I'm gonna be using a kind of a rubbing type of technique. I'll do the left side first, we'll do the right side um, later. So, or after we do the left, after we do the left side, we'll do the right side. So I'm gonna start in through here. I'm gonna just kind of pull my whole shadow underneath here. I hardly have any paint on my brush. I can always add more into the equation of my shadow. Right now, I'm just going for a real light sketcherly type of appearance. So I have um, uh, control over the situation. So I see that there's a dip up there. So I'm gonna kind of put a dip in through here. You can always put a little bit of water on your brush if you want to. I'm gonna utilize this as my bend for the wing over in through there. I'm gonna bring this all the way down to my tip that I've already kind of designated how far I want that to go. I'm reloading my brush with a little bit more paint so I don't run out. I'm gonna go ahead and put the um, shadow of the feet maybe coming in through this area in through here. And again, just kind of using a light sketcherly type of thought or brush stroke in order to do this. I'm gonna have the side of the bot or the side of the body in through here. And then maybe I'll have my tail kind of coming out in through here. And again, not much paint. I'm really just looking for something that's gonna give the illusion that this in fact is the shadow on the ground of the bird itself. Gonna reload my brush to make sure I have enough. So this part in through here is gonna be a shadow of that. So I'm just gonna kind of use that light sketcherly type of brush stroke. As I'm doing this, I can certainly, you know, add more paint if I wanted to. I'm gonna go ahead and do this part in through here. It's gonna be the shadow of the big wing itself. So I'm just watching up here, seeing if I can kind of mimic some of those little tips of the wings, 
So maybe I'm just kind of bringing some of that in through there. And again, it doesn't have to be exact because those shadows, they can get skewed by the angle. So don't feel the pressure of doing it um, perfect. And then if you feel like you want it smoother, you can certainly pick up some of your background color. So if I wanted to pick up a little bit of purple with my blue, the light purple with my blue, I can certainly soften it, making it look like it's still in the same direction of the snow, because that's the probably the trickiest part is making it look like it's part of the snow and not just something that you're sticking on top of the snow. So if you can incorporate some of that snow color into it, that's going to make it look much more natural. So I just picked up a little bit of that light purple and just kind of incorporated that a bit just to make it look a little bit more natural. And then I'm going to go ahead and tackle the right side. So I'm just picking up some of that blue color and I want it again to look pretty natural in here. So this was the back and the, the full body based on the angle. I'm going to guess that the shadow is going to come out somewhere in this vicinity somewhere in through here and I'm going to have the tip of my shadow I would say probably somewhere in through here so this is going to again kind of give me I think I'm going to just have like the top part of this wing in through here so something maybe in this vicinity is going to give me this wing and I'm just doing the shadow of this wing right here um, because that's what I feel would happen. <laughs> so I'm bringing this out in through here and then just kind of giving myself the edges of uh, this wing like this. So I'm going to reload my brush with a little bit of that dark blue, give myself some of these tips in through here. And again, just be carefree with it. Think of it as part of the snow. The part of the snow is just being a darker tone in order to um, get this shadow to appear and then once you've got it on there if you're happy with where it is just pick up some of either the light purple or the light blue and just kind of intermingle a little bit of that color in whatever style of brush stroke you used to create the snow underneath and that's going to allow you to have um, a more believable type of a shadow on top of it. And then you can certainly fiddle with it all you want. We're gonna be utilizing this same paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got your shadow done, make any little adjustments that you want, then you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be finishing the wings and the tail. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black, brown, tan, white, blue, and that might be it. That, that's, that might be it. If I, that's kind of all the, well, it's not yellow, but that's a, I think those would be all the colors. If I can use any others, I'll let you know. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to plan it out um, strategically so when one part is drying, I'll be able to tackle the other. These birds, they're so beautiful. And when you see them in the winter time, they've got this, um, this dark markings on, on the back side of them. But it, in this particular type of lighting, it's almost got like a blue undertone to it. So I'm going to be doing a blue undertone to um, the feathers that take up the outside of this wing as, as well as the fe little feathers at the top of the head and top of the um, tail. And then we'll build shadows and highlights and the markings on the feathers. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to use a little bit of my blue and a touch of white. I'm really just making myself a medium blue color. Um, I don't want it too, too vibrant, so that's why I'm toning it down a little bit with the white. So somewhere in this vicinity, and I don't need a lot on my brush, so just a little tiny bit on my brush will do it. I'm going to do this um, outside of this wing in through here, and I'm going to let this color kind of fade up this corner and fade almost to the edge of, um, of this wing in through here. So just kind of letting it kind of blend in with that. I'm also going to do a little bit on top of the head in through here. So I'm really just kind of rubbing it in, maybe a little bit coming on top of the head in through here without having too um, 
hard of edges or clean lines. I'm gonna bring a little bit of it in through here so it's kind of wrapping around the body a little bit and then a little bit kind of coming up the edge of this wing in through here. So just wrapping this around the body a little bit. I'm gonna put a, reloading my brush with a little bit more so I can put a touch on the edge of the tail feather in through here. So it gives you the illusion that we're seeing a little bit of the exterior part of that tail feather. So something like that. I'm thinking that's pretty good. Maybe that's it's looking pretty good to me. I think I brought it down far enough in this area. I can always add more later if I want to, but I'm thinking that that's gonna work in through here. So then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna start adding the shadows in my um in my wings so the shadows are going to be the underside which is going to be the underside of this wing because this is the exterior that bends around here and this is the underside of this wing in through here and then in through here and like the little armpit area is going to be a shadow so what i'm going to do is i'm going to be using a, a medium kind of gray. So that's where some of my black is going to come into play. You can certainly just use it with a little bit of that tan that you have. You don't need it to go too, too dark. So I'm just going to kind of utilize both of those colors on my brush at the same time. And when I'm doing these shadows, I'm thinking I don't want it to go too, too dark, but I'm also going to be doing it in the same um, direction of the wings themselves. So I've got a little bit on my brush in through here, and then I'm going to be pulling it down in through here, give myself some um, direction to it. I am also keeping like a soft edge where it's going to meet that exterior portion of the bird's um, wing. So something like this works out just fine for me in through here. So that um, works. I'm going to pick up some of that original tan color just to get this to um, blend in a little bit more so it's not so um, so firm of a transition in through here. So I just picked up some of that original tan color to make sure that I've got that um, transition in a way that makes my eye happy. <laughs> so I want to make sure that this kind of comes in enough in through here, this little shadow crook of the, um, uh, the wing. So I'm just making sure that I pull that in far enough as well. That's looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to do the same thing up in through here. Just going to use that black with a touch of my tan or tan with a touch of the black. And then I'm going to give myself this shadowy area underneath this wing. So this is going to help to separate these two pieces in through here. And then I just kind of pull it out and get it to, um, kind of dissipate into those wings that are the feathers that are going at farther away from from the shadowed area picking up some of that tan to just make sure that these blend in well together it's looking pretty good to me just bringing this out and when you use these multiple colors especially when you're kind of blending it if provided you just kind of keep your brush moving in the direction of those wings that's what's going to give it the natural um, appearance of them overlapping one another and getting them to kind of talk to each other, each each particular feather to talk to each other. So it's definitely a nice building process, um, but keeping that paint kind of moist on your brush helps to do that as well. I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath the um, tail as well. So again, tan plus a little bit of black on my brush, and I'm just gonna give myself the same thought process underneath here, underneath the tail. So just making sure that it's a little bit darker up the top, and then when it's going towards those tips of the um, feathers, just making sure that it blends in with that tan. So now I'm gonna go ahead and finish kind of the rest of the um, the wing feathers themselves and then we'll put some markings on them in a minute. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to utilize that um, tan color to just make sure that I have a nice transition in through here. I did have remnants of a little bit of the gray which totally works as long as this section is lighter than your shaded section it will make sense and then I'm just bringing these kind of long continual strokes out towards the tips of the wings. The second layer will make it look lighter. So even if um, you're utilizing the same color on the second layer that you did on the first, because you're layering it like this on a darker background, it will get lighter the um, the next layer that you use or the next um, the next 
uh, step that you use. So again, I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I don't have very many of the wings to do this on. I'm going to add white in a minute, but right now just kind of making sure that I've got all the way to the edge, putting this little bit of a second um, layer on there just to get it to all blend in. Now, without washing my brush, I'm picking up white paint. So the white is going to give me the vibrancy in the joints and it's gonna give me where the sunshine is hitting. So I've got white on my brush. I didn't wash my brush, because again, I really want this to look like it's transitioning from one, um, one intensity to the next, or one color to the next. So by not washing my brush, this allows me to get these colors to really talk to each other and to look like they are um, just kind of living, living in the same place together. And then I'm just going to bring this down this back side. And I don't want any firm lines either. It just kind of dusting this on. So I have a high spot on this, um, on this wing as it is expanding and getting ready to take flight or starting to take flight. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this wing over here. So I'm going to put my high spot or my brightest spot somewhere in through here with that Sorry, I want this a little lighter. Um, where the where the wing bends in through there, just gonna do the same thing over here with that white paint, and then just kind of pull it out and get it to blend into those feathers that are are the closest and have the the tips of them are showing the most or seeing the most of the light. And I'm gonna bring this little highlight down this uh, edge as well because I feel this would definitely get a bunch of sunshine on it. So just giving myself that little bright edge in through there and just making sure I've got it as bright as I want it. And then I'm gonna take a peek at the tail to see if I need to do any highlight on the tail. Um, and then we'll start with the markings. So the tail, I might want a teeny tiny bit of a highlight, maybe on this underside in through here. Maybe it's catching a little bit of that light underneath there and maybe a teeny tiny bit on this top side. Not much at all, just, you know, just something to make sure we haven't forgotten about it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting my markings on. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. Most of this is gonna be um, on the wings will be brown and on this blue area will be black, but you can certainly, um, you know, kind of intermingle the both of them if you want to. So I'm gonna pick up some black paint. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of polka dot type of marks on this blue area. Primarily um, uh, on that edge is going to give me um, a lot of information. So I'm just gonna kind of dot my brush with a real light kind of sketchily type of brush stroke. This is going to give me the illusion of those of the feathers that are on the back side of these wings. So really I'm just kind of polka dotting it. If you end up doing too much, don't worry. You can always kind of just back it off, let it dry for a minute, and then um, you can come back with some of that original tan and blue, and you can always just kind of work at it until you feel like you've got it into a great spot. It does come in this entire blue area and kind of wrap around the tippy top of the, the head. So these areas almost look like they end up blending into one another, the head and this, bat, this wing that we're seeing. So as I do this, I am mindful of that. Um, I'm gonna bring this polka dot kind of all the way up into that area of the um, wing as it creeps around the bend up and through there. And then I'll bring it down into this head region as well. So just kind of utilizing the black at the moment. I'm probably gonna introduce a little bit of brown in a moment as well. Um, just so it doesn't get too, too dark on the face area in through here, but that's looking pretty good up and through there. I think without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up some brown paint too. So right now I have brown and black paint on my brush. As I get towards this head area in through here, I'm a little bit more cautious because I don't want it to go too far into the face, but I do want it to represent or to show as it is, um, 
the top of the head and that some of this darkness creeps kind of around the face and through here. So just kind of getting this in play. You can bring it past the blue a little bit if, or you can introduce more blue if you wanted to. Um, whatever is visually appealing to you. Just try to get a little bit going on in through here. That's looking pretty good to me. Maybe a little bit more up and through here just so it kind of transitions into this wing a bit more so that blue isn't too too in your face and then we are going to be doing a whole bunch in the head area as well um, but this just kind of gets the party started and then I'm going to do the I still have that black and brown on my brush I'm going to do a little bit of the dotting at the top side of the tail back in through here so that's going to give you the same look to it and just bringing this kind of down but again still seeing some of the blue and that little bit of a highlight on there that I want and then I'm going to kind of put my head back see if I want any I think I want this to be a little bit further up this area over in through here just to give myself the illusion that we're seeing part of that side of that one as well. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and pick up brown paint. Brown is going to be the color that I'm going to use for all the markings on the wings themselves. So I'm going to be using a real carefree kind of just curved marking to these. So I'm going to just kind of push my brush like this and then just bring it in this curved type of manner. So I'm going to do maybe three or four on each one of these um, feathers as on um, the bigger feathers but as I get towards the smaller ones I'll probably do less. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a fifth one here. There we go. And then I'm just kind of really in a carefree manner. They don't have to be perfectly lined up with one another. Just you want to kind of give them that that little bit of a curve. And then I'm going to go ahead and at, do the same thing with these little guys as they're coming into this area back in through here. And then I'm just going to kind of tap a little marking at the bottom of some of those ones. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the little tail feather. Just kind of tap in a little bit of this curved type of marking. Going to go to that right wing our right wing, the bird's left wing, <laughs> and going to do the same thing. Start with my bigger marks on the larger ones and go towards the smaller marks. I'm going to do this in a um, similar type of curve. I think I can go, I'm going to go up like this for them, something like this. Once you get your rhythm, it, it's much easier, <laughs> but starting those first couple, it's like, what's my rhythm going to be? I'm going to just kind of curve them. And if you bump into the next one, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Just, just let it roll. Let it roll. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful bird that's got an organic type of pattern on the feathers. So just let your brush be free and let happen what's going to happen. You can always do little touch-ups later. And then I think that's it. You can do any little touch-ups that you want. If you wanted to add more highlight, just pick up a little bit more white or, you know, step back from it for a minute. See if there is any other um, marks that you want to make. And if so, feel free to do so. We're going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush or your medium brush away, take out your uh, small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the, the body and the legs. We'll do our little facial features and toenails in a future step, but this is gonna be in essence kind of all the highlights and shadows for the feathers and the feather detail on these two areas. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, white, and if I, maybe some of my original tan, but I'll call them out as I, as I go for it. So what I'm really in essence going to be doing is putting a whole bunch of little brown um, tips to the feathers all along this body area. I'm going to make sure that I have enough shadow underneath here with a little bit of, um, I don't know what it's called, but the connector piece for the wing to the body somewhere in here. More of the armpit piece, I'm sure is the proper technical term for it. Um, and then I'm going to put some shadow in between the legs and make sure that they have enough highlight and put some um, highlight on the face and give it texture so it looks like feathers and make sure this um, 
decoration design type of um, feathers at the top of the head blends in with the rest of the um, body. So where I'm going to start is with my shadowy areas. I'll kind of work my way towards the light. So I really want to put a little tiny shadow in through there. So I'm going to put black and brown on my brush. This is going to help me to um, delineate the two legs and kind of start the process of where all the light is coming from and how I can get some good dimension in through here. So I have black and brown. I'm just kind of getting the darkness on here. Now I'm going to pick up without washing my brush brown and my tan color and I'm going to soften the edge that touches this right leg. So what this is going to do, I'm using like a little um, I'm going to call it like a feather type of brush stroke in order to get these to softly kind of work themselves into each other. I'm also going to put a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of the um, feet so that way it looks like it's kind of curved under a bit. So while I'm here and I've got my dirty brush, I can just kind of put a little bit at the bottom in through here. And you can see I'm using a very messy brush stroke. I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm picking up more of my tan color so I can get this shadow to work its way into the light area. So again, I'm using kind of a rubbing, scrubbing type of technique to get it on here um, in order to provide me with that roughness or um, textural type of effect. This leg, this is kind of the thigh area. So while I have the that brown, black, and tan on my brush, I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow in through here. So this will get this, this thigh to pop out and just kind of get this little shadow to blend in with some of that those fluffier feathers. I just picked up more of my tan color to make sure that that works its way in. And then I'm just gonna kind of make sure that this all looks like it belongs together. So I just kind of keep picking up my tan as I'm going towards the light, which will be that right hand side. So just getting this in through here and making sure that it blends in well. I will be putting a much brighter highlight on the edge of that in a little bit, but right now just working on my shadows. On this left hand side, I know that I want a real highlight over on the, the right, but I want to make sure that I've got kind of a shadowy area in through here. So I'm just using a little bit of my tan plus a bit of um, the black and brown on my brush to give myself a little bit of a shadow on this side of the leg. I know that I'm going to have some feathers over here as well, so just going to get that to kind of blend in, continuing to pick up my tan color just to get it to, to blend in as well. I'm going to start to do a little bit of the, the feathery kind of brush strokes just to make sure that that has some good texture to it. And when I add the decorative kind of markings, that'll, that'll help to sell the story even better uh, in a minute. I'm also going to go ahead and put a little bit more shadow up in this crook of the underarm area. <laughs> so if this is my, my body in through here, I'm going to add a bit more um, shadow in through here. And I kind of waited to have my small brush to do this just so I had a bit more control as to where I wanted it to go. So I'm just kind of utilizing a little bit of that black brown with a bit of the tan. And I want to get this to kind of blend into the, um, the, the, wing feathers themselves, but I want to make sure that I have that that connector kind of piece in through here. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint on my brush to give myself a bit of a light area in through here just while I'm here so I don't have to, um, so I won't forget about it later and just kind of getting that to make sense in through there. So now that I've got my shadow in through here, I think I want a little bit of a shadow over on this side of the neck. So black, brown, and a little bit of my tan. And I just want a little bit in through here, again, just to kind of sell the story of the form of the body. So just getting a little bit in through here, not much, gonna get it to blend in with the rest of the area. And that's looking pretty good. Maybe maybe a touch in through here. Just getting the you know the head to kind of pop out a little bit. I'm gonna put a lot of lightness on that face in a minute, but right now just really trying to get this to um, have a lot of form to it. And by the time we start, like I said, putting those markings on, it's gonna it's gonna look fantastic. 
So that's looking pretty good to me. I'm going to now um, add some white paint to my brush so I can get some light um, areas on the face. So when I'm doing the face, I'm going to be utilizing a um, really fast, just kind of chaotic, give me lots of texture on the face, but kind of in a circular type of brush stroke. Um, that's going to tell the viewer that the face is in fact kind of round. I'm using a small brush that will help me to not overdo the lightness here because I want that I want the viewer to uh, to feel the texture and to see the texture in the feathers and if I was to use a big brush I might overdo it and just make one solid color so utilizing this small brush helps me to kind of control the intensity of my um, of my brush strokes. I think I want this to be a little bit darker on this side so I just picked up my tan with a little bit of my black and my brown just to give myself a little bit more um, shadowing over on this left side to sell the story of this part being the brightest. That's looking pretty good to me. Maybe a little bit more white feathers on the face in through here and again just getting this central area to pop out with um, a good amount of the light works. I'm going to pick up a little bit of black and brown just to get maybe a couple more of these coming down into the face a little bit more just to get, he almost looks like he's got a little haircut on or something. So that looks super cute to me. Now I'm going to start adding the colored decorations on the wings. So I'm going to pick up some brown paint. I didn't wash my brush and I'm going to be utilizing this entire section of the body as well as underneath here, over here a little bit up the side of the body. This is all going to get these decorative, not decorative, the, the markings on the ends of the feathers. So they're the same colors that you used on the big wing feathers, only we're going to do much more of them and I'm going to be using a smaller type of brush stroke, but I'm going to be curving it. So this is going to give me that look of the layered feathers within the this air part of the body. I just picked up a little bit of black so when I do the ones up and through here they can get a little bit more um, darkness to them as they're starting to meet these um, the ones at the top of the head and I'm thinking about the shape of the of the body so that's the direction I am painting these curves in. So as I'm doing this I'm thinking, okay, well, it's it's curving around this way, so that's the direction that I'm putting these in. And again, if you ever feel like you go too far and you're like, oh my God, I put way too many of those in through here, don't worry, just let it dry and you can bring back some of that original um, tan color that you that you used for the for the base coat. I'm going to put some down in through here, getting these to all just kind of talk together. I'm going to put some little ones down on the um, side of the leg and at this point I'm using a combination of black and brown on my brush and I've got little tiny ones on the leg, on the side of the leg in through here and I'm thinking what direction would they go in and this is looking pretty good to me so I'm just kind of doing that at kind of a diagonal curved type of a type of a way, type of a line. I'm going to again still kind of keep with that black and brown. I think I'm going to pull this body part, the back of here into the um, tail a little bit in through here. Yeah, that looks so it just kind of makes sense coming around in through here. Maybe these kind of curl up in this little corner a bit as well. That makes them look like it really has some dimension to it. Then I'm going to, I think I want a little bit more underneath here. And then, you know, at this point, once I, I've got them on here, I just really kind of see if it makes sense to me. So I would, you know, probably at some point go on the other side of the room <laughs> and look at it from a distance and see if it makes sense. If it does, great, I'm all done. If not, I, I keep just adding these little feathers until I feel like it transitions well from the head into the side of the body. And I've got to put some little highlights on my legs as well. I'm going to put some little tiny feathers coming down these legs just to, again, so it makes sense to me. Um, and once I've got that on, I'm going to just pick, start picking up some white paint. I really want a bright highlight over here on the right side of this leg so it looks like 
it is being hit by whatever sunshine is being had on this really cold snowy day and then I'm going to do the same thing on the foot so um, I'm going to put this white highlight in through here and if your white doesn't feel or look like it's as white as you want it you can always do a layer with a little bit of yellow in it sometimes doing a first layer with a little bit of yellow will elevate the luminescent quality of your white paint um, but if you can put in a little bit of white and it works for you, then great. Just go with that. But if you feel like you want um, a little bit more of like a creamy tone to it, feel free to do one layer with a touch of white or touch of yellow and then come back um, and put little bright white streaks on top of it. Right now, as I'm getting towards these um, adorable fluffy feet. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to have some, some toenails in there in a, in a little bit. So I'm kind of saving a little bit of room. I could certainly use a little bit of brown if I wanted to, but just making sure that I've got, um, some fluffiness to them. And if I needed to add any more shadows or anything like that, I certainly would, but I'm thinking that this is looking pretty good. Um, I might tweak it a little bit more, but uh, when you're all set with yours, we are going to be utilizing this uh, same brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your feathers on your body and your legs done, you can uh, wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our eyes, our beak, our toes, and our snow. <laughs> I know it seems like a weird combination to do all in one step, but we'll knock it out of the park because they're really tiny little steps and they're, they're not too difficult. So I'm gonna start with my small brush. I might use my medium brush when we get to the snow, but I'm gonna start with my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, white, yellow, br and brown. So I'm gonna start with yellow, and white on my brush at the same time. You do not need a lot, just a little dabble, do ya? I'm gonna put my eyes in place. I'm gonna have my first eye, if you come directly below um, where the head meets this wing here, about a uh, half of an inch to an inch, that's gonna be about where the center of my eye is gonna be. I need a little more yellow so we can see this. I'm gonna have it um, kind of, uh, I would say maybe about a quarter to a half of an inch wide. They're really small and just a little bit of a crescent down at the bottom. So again, just yellow and white is where I'm starting with this just to give myself the start of my eye. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to go to the left of that about an inch, inch and a half. So this is gonna be directly below like the, the crook of the wing where the wing turned up here, just come down from there. So this is gonna give you a good angle on these eyes. I'm gonna go again, kind of straight across for the top of it, and then just a little curve for the bottom part of it. So they don't need to be big at all. So once I've done that, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to put a little bit of brown and black on my brush. I'm gonna give myself a little tiny um, beak so between the two eyes you're gonna um, start at about the bottom of the eyes and just give yourself kind of a little vertical line you can curve it a little bit if you want to but you don't really need to do much to it as long as it's kind of pointy at the end you could even soften the edges of it so it's not a real firm line because we're gonna put a highlight on it in a minute so if you want to soften the edges so it almost looks like it is um, coming out of the feathers, you can certainly do that. And it's not long, maybe about a half of an inch to um, three quarters of an inch. Then I'm gonna reload my brush with some black paint. I'm gonna do an outline around my eyes. So just a real kind of skinny outline around the eyes, something like this will give me that exterior look. I'm gonna do a little pupil in the top a portion of that eye, something like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye. So just a little bit of black. I'm gonna outline it like this. Just a little skinny outline. And if your outline isn't perfect, that's great because that's gonna make it look more natural. So something like that. I'm gonna give myself a little pupil at the top. Maybe bring that pupil down just a little bit more. Maybe bring this one down just a little bit more. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush 
and I'm gonna put a little white paint on my brush for a highlight on my beak. So I just put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush. I'm gonna give myself a little highlight on my beak. This could certainly have a little tiny curve to it if you wanted to. So just a little streak down that. And then I'm gonna put a little extra, extra white around the eyes. So this will give me um, the opportunity if I wanted some more um, fluff around them, you can certainly just bring a little bit of extra white around them. You can also, I'm going to add a little a twinkle in the eye at the bottom portion of that yellow, but this little bit of um, extra white around helps to sell the story. You can even bring a couple of extra feathers coming in towards that beak if you if you felt that that was necessary or if you needed to do any other additional kind of feathers throughout the face now is the opportunity to do so i'm going to reload my brush with a t touch more white and give myself a little light part in the bottom of that eye in the bottom of the yellow part so that's all i'm going to do for my beak and my eyes and again you can certainly tweak it as much as you want to i'm going to move down to my toes which is going to be a pretty similar process i'm going to put black and brown on my brush and kind of give myself a couple of little claws that are going to come out so these uh, you can kind of have them coming out in whatever which direction you want can kind of find yourself a couple of little dark spots that you've probably already have, oops, that was a huge one. Let's just wipe that one away. <laughs> a couple of little dark spots that you probably already have. And I'm just pulling down a couple of little claws through in the, in the mix of them. And then I will, I'll, I'm picking up a touch of white paint and just gonna give myself a little highlight on whatever little claws I decided to make. And if you wanted to, you could certainly add more fur or um, more feathers around them. Feel free, this is the time where you could um, get any little final details. You could even put a little brown and black as little shadows between the toes if you wanted to. If you wanted that extra bit of information, you could certainly put um, that stuff in through there. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch brushes to my medium brush to get the snow. Um, to be kicked up from the bird. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of, um, let's see, what am I gonna go for here? I think I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of my tan and maybe that like gray that I had over there and white paint, I mean, uh, and water. So I've got my tan plus water on my brush and then I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel. This is going to give me um, like a smoky, foggy type of kicked up look, and then we'll dot in some um, white pieces of snow. So I have watered down tan, black, and water on my brush, and I'm just gonna kind of rub this in. Now clearly that's not bright enough, so I'm gonna add a little bit more tan to my brush to give me this kicked up, almost like foggy type of look to it. So I'm really just, in my head I'm saying, I just want this snow to look like it's like fluffed up in this one particular area so and that the um bird did it so <laughs> i'm gonna do this now i'm gonna pick up a teeny bit of white paint my paint on my canvas is still pretty wet and fluid so it's going to allow me to just kind of blend in a couple of little lighter spots in through here and kind of give you the impression that it, it's coming to or from the bird itself. And then once I've got that area in there and it looks like it blends in pretty well with my surroundings, now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint and give myself just dots of snow that are gonna kind of trail from or to my um, bird. So this is just gonna be little tiny speckles in different directions. If you want, you can certainly do it with the tan. If the white is too white for you, you can pick up a little bit of the tan. I just caution you, you don't need too much, just kind of little, the little in, in, you know, information that's gonna steer the viewer into understanding what's happening, that it's coming. You know, he's lifting off the ground and he's creating just a itty bitty bit of this snow being pulled by his beautiful claws. And then you can do any little final touch-ups that you want. And then we have one little itty bitty step left to go. It'll be with the small brush. So 
once you've got all these details done, you can uh, put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm going with some black paint. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going bottom left on this one. Um, I sign mine, where am I going? I'm gonna go, um, I'm going right here. <laughs> oh, I'm going in the wing. Um, I sign mine with my initials. You can sign yours with the first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful winter bird and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.